comes to IT, hands-on is the best way to learn. And a couple days ago, I received a package for a new device that I'm going to put in my home lab. Also, the kids are home from school, and they've been dying to get on this YouTube channel. So I figured a good trade-off would be they could be on the YouTube channel as long as they do a little bit of network engineering. So let's go downstairs, get the package, we'll grab the kids, we'll come back, and we'll open it up and see what we got. Hey everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here with another Cyber Insight video. Thanks for coming back to the channel and making it your new spot for cyber and network knowledge. As I said, we had a package. I went downstairs and I picked it up. Got it down there. So I'm going to go grab the kids, bring them in here, have them open it up. We'll find out what it is. Then we'll install and rack it and uh, we'll get the kids to configure it. All right. So we got the kids, we got the box, we're gonna open it up, we're gonna see what it is. It's gonna be super exciting, or not, but we're gonna find out. All right, let's open it up. I have a question. I heard, we got the kids, we're gonna open them up. <laughs> no, I said we got the kids, we got the box, we open it up. I don't, okay. Alright, so the device that we got is a Juniper SRX 240 firewall. It's a great device to pick up if you want to learn Juniper and the Juno software. I think I only paid $75 for it because it is end of life, it's not supported anymore. So I wouldn't actually use it on a production environment, but here in the lab it makes perfect sense. So we're going to go and get it racked and then we're going to go from there. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and rack this here. We got some cage nuts and some screws that we need to throw in there. I'm gonna put these in here, hold the firewall, the kids are gonna screw it in, and then we'll go from there. So we're going to start drawing out the lab network and how it connects to the internet and then we're going to put in IP addresses so that we know what those are once we go to configure them and uh, put in some static routes as well. Starting over on this side, draw out a cloud to represent the internet. So you write internet inside of the cloud? Yes. Okay. Now from the internet, draw a straight line. Yeah, you can go down. Yep. Down to there, yep. Okay. And that straight line, I want that to connect to a circle with an X in it. All right, so uh, connect it to a circle with an X in it. Perfect. Yep. Okay. And then, Crystal, from that circle with the X, draw a line over to a square that's going to represent the firewall. And then underneath that, the SRX, go down just a little bit with a line, down to uh, a box that's gonna signify the computer that we're gonna be using. All right, so what this means, and it's a perfect question, is this down here, is gonna signify our new lab environment that we're building out, right? So this is the box that we're gonna build out. We have to create a new network here and then give this guy an IP address on the network that already exists here, okay? So um, how about you take and do two circles to signify the two different networks? So just kind of do like a circle like that and then a circle like that, okay? No, we don't need to do that because that already exists. That's actually like uh, 
when we're talking about going to the internet over uh, our cable connection. So we don't need to do that. Okay. Now, so like I said, this network here already exists, but this guy doesn't have an IP address into this network. And so when we're talking about a computer, the Mac, needing to get out to the internet from a different network, what we have to do is we have to route the traffic from that network down there to the other network. So this Mac and this SRX are gonna need a slash 24 subnet between here. And then this here is a slash 24 subnet. And what that means, when you draw out the IP address, I'll explain to you, okay? So um, this guy right here, write the IP address, go 192 dot 168 two, no, I'm sorry, 192.168.2.0, okay? And then underneath this, or you can actually keep going this way, it's fine. Go 255.255. .255 Wait, dot, this is a different number, right? Yeah, this is a subnet mask. And I'll, I'll explain to you what that is. 255.255.255. .255 .255. Dot zero. There you go, perfect. Okay, so what that means, what that subnet mask means is it's telling us that the network address is 192.168.2 and this area here, which is called a octet, is can be used for anything as far as giving IPs to the hosts. Okay, so anything that's within this circle here, has to be 192.168.2, but these IPs can be anything within here from, uh, or the, the range of this network, I should say, is zero to 255. So whenever you're looking at IP addresses, the possible numbers that could be in each of these is zero to 255, okay? So what we're gonna do is this guy here, put a dot, go, dot one. Oh, actually, I take that back, dot two. Okay. And then on this guy here, dot 115. Yep, okay. Now for Crystal, for the network that's down here, this is a brand new network. So this one already exists. And really all we're doing is creating a new IP address that we're gonna put on the new firewall. Here, we're creating a whole new network. So that down there, and you can write it kind of like how he wrote that, but write it out to here. Okay, is going to be 10.10.10.0. No, 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 you have it right. Yep, yep, yep. And then the subnet mask, right? Remember, I said a subnet mask is what tells us how many IP addresses we can have within that network. Um, is going to be the same as the one that we did in this network. So it's 255. You can write it. You can write it. Uh, you're, Right here, or you can put it underneath there. 250, 255.255.255.0. Like okay. okay. And then the IP addresses that we're going to want to go here for the SRX portion, um, you are going to want to go uh, dot one. You got to write dot one because that's gonna be the address. So this box here on this interface, we're gonna give it an IP address of 10.10.10.1. And the Mac, and the Mac uh, computer is gonna have an IP address of 10.10.10.10. .10 so you can put dot .10 down there. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. That will get everything IP addresses. What we're gonna have to do is put in a static route. So static route, is something that's going to be on this box that says to get out to the internet I need to know where to send the traffic and so we're going to put an IP route on here that's going to send everything to 192.168.2.2 okay so we can do Jasper over here go IP route R O U T E 
and then underneath that go 0 .0 .0 .0. Okay. zero dot zero dot zero dot zero. Okay, and then do a slash. Yep, and then go zero. And what that means is any IP address, it doesn't matter, all of them go into that. Okay, so that's called a default route. What's a D? Everything. Yep. And, no, 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 you don't need to draw it though. Okay. Yep. And then we're going to say that for all the traffic going anywhere, we're going to point it right to this guy. So then over here, right, 192, 168.2.2. That is the IP address of this guy right here. So once this guy's traffic, once the traffic from the computer comes up to the SRX that we're gonna configure, this guy is gonna have a route that says, send all of the traffic going anywhere that I don't know about over to dot two. And then this guy is already configured because all the other traffic are going through that. And he has a route that says the same thing, except it points out to the internet. So. That's how we're gonna get all of that stuff to work. So now we are gonna power up the SRX and then we will uh, start to configure it to get everything working. All right, so we are ready to start configuring the firewall. Um, so as we were looking at the diagram on the board before, we have the connection going from G000 going outbound to the rest of the network and then G001 going to the uh, back end or the internal side of the lab network. So we're going to get into the firewall. We're going to set up two different security zones, a lab internal and a lab external. We're going to create a IP address object in the zone for the workstation and then one for DNS so that we can get out and resolve IP addresses. And then we're going to put in a static route and then a policy to allow web traffic and uh, DNS. So right now, if we go on here, we will not be able to go out to the internet. So if you want to go click on the web browser for a second, Which one? this one here. Right, and then just type in up top uh, www.google.com. And it's not going anywhere because it's blocked. There's no firewall rules in place yet. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna implement those. So if you go and you click into this window here, right, this is actually the device that we ended up installing. So we are gonna create a few different things in here to allow the traffic from the workstation to be able to get out all the way to the internet. To do any type of configurations, we have to go into edit mode. So type edit and then hit enter. Okay. And then type set space security space. So now that we got the route in place and we have the interfaces and IPs in place and we created the security zone, there's a couple more things that we need to do. We need to set up a NAT so that all the traffic going through the firewall gets NATed to the external interface because the network that it'll be going through doesn't know anything about this new lab environment. So we've got to do that. Then we got to set up the security policies and then we'll be able to test the internet and it should work.
So that wraps it up. I thought that this was a great experience. The kids really enjoyed learning how to get into and configure uh, the Juniper firewall. So I think the lesson out of this, like I said at the beginning, is that the hands-on experience with devices is really the way to go when it comes to learning stuff. And in this case, this SRX firewall, I mean, it really didn't cost me that much money and being able to get in and configure and get your hands on it adds a little bit more to it than kind of the virtual labs and things like that that you can do with different vendors. Now those are perfect and those are great and I'll, I'll actually link uh, some of those Juniper labs down below in the comments um, so that you can go and do that. But if you have the ability to get an actual piece of hardware, I, I wouldn't overlook that. I think that that is a, a good path to go down in order to get uh, hands-on experience. So uh, I think it was a great experience for the kids. If folks like that and like seeing the kids kind of learning stuff and us laying things out on the whiteboard and, and building things out, I'm happy to make uh, some more videos where we can go into some other um, arenas as far as basic networking and cybersecurity and stuff like that. It might be kind of cool. So if you liked it and you enjoyed it, put some comments down below, let me know. Um, as always, any other ideas for videos that you want me to do, uh, go ahead, drop those down below as well. Make sure that you like the video, hit the subscription notification bell, that way you don't miss out on any new content when I drop that. Hope everybody's doing good, staying safe at home, being healthy, taking care of each other. Uh, look forward to talking to you soon, all right? Take care.